we'll now get into the admin side of GA4 to give you a greater understanding of how the administration works for GA4. So within GA4, setup is slightly similar to Universal Analytics, but there are some changes. So you do have your account settings, your account access management, filters, change history, and the rubbish bin, pretty much like you used to have within Universal Analytics. We open up the account settings, you can see the information around your account, so the account name, the ID, and you know all the, the options that you had within there before. You can set this up to your own desirability. Um, there are no real recommendations for my part on how to set this part up. It's just whatever you're comfortable with and how you want your business to be done. You also have the account access management as well, so this is who has access to the account. So at the moment for the account level, it's just me. If you're an organization with you know many members, you, you'd, you'd see all that information within here. And the organization admin or the administrator would be able to add or remove users as they see fit. You have the all filters section as well, but this will only count for your universal analytics filters. So for GA4, this isn't really relevant for the tutorial. You can have changed to your account history, so you can see uh, all the changes that have been made um, over time, which is really useful. And then you also have rubbish bin as well. So if you delete any properties, they'll be seen within this view here. So within the property area, you have setup assistant. So this is what will help you um, when you are uh, setting up your GA4 property. So you can see kind of like areas that you might want to check out. So data collection, you know, first one, you can see that in this instance it is flowing. However, there are some steps that aren't done. So you can see turn on Google signals, um, which allows better ad ads personalization and allows you to capture more user information such as gender and age, etc. And um, we've got to set up conversions, defining audiences, and also the Google ads um, link as well can be seen within here. There's also the advanced setup options, which Setup Assistant helps you with, which is around like, importing your data into Google BigQuery, managing users of the property, setting up a user ID. So if people can actually log into your website um, or app, you want to set up a user ID, which allows you to get better user numbers within GA4. And you can use the, use, the, the measurement protocol as well, um, which will be more useful for, for developers. Um, so you have the property settings here where you have the name of the property, um, change some filters, and um, make the property just a little bit more relevant to your business if you've not done already. Um, all the information is in here. You can also delete the property if you if you need to and it's no longer relevant as well. You have property access management, which is the same as account access management, but just for the property. And then you have your data streams as well. So you can have multiple data streams per property. So in this instance, I have just a data stream for the website but GA4 allows you to capture web and app simultaneously. So if I wanted to capture an iOS app or Android app data stream as well, you can do that. And then when you click on the options, it takes you through all the options you need to do um, in order to create that data stream. You can also create a data stream for multiple websites as well. So if you want to have cross domain tracking enabled, that is one solution that you can put in place. So you have multiple data streams per domain and that can help you to have all that data within within one property as well. If you are looking to get uh, cross-domain tracking implemented with your GA4 account and you'd, uh, you'd like some help with that, I do provide GA4 consultations and a link to that will be in the description of this video. So within this section, you have the events. So this is a section where all of your events that are being tracked in GA4 uh, will be displayed. Um, you can mark your events as conversion within here, which is quite an important feature. So if you created a custom event for say, for example, purchases or lead generations, this is the area of GA4 where you'll go and then you'll mark it as conversion. And then from that point onwards within your reports, that event itself would um, highlight as a conversion, um, which gives you, you know, a bit more useful data because then you can start to work out a conversion rate and um, other useful measures within your reports that we went through beforehand. Within the events section as well, you can also create events only based off existing events within GA4. So if you had an event that had specific parameters within GA4 and you wanted to create an event based off that, you can do that within this configuration within here. So you can give it a custom event name, you can choose the parameter 
and you can choose the value and then from that you can create a, a new event within GA4. If you want to create brand new events, so events that aren't based off a existing event, the best method to do that in my view is through Google Tag Manager where you can create custom GA4 events and then push it to your property. And that can be based on you know, any, any data that essentially that you, that you acquire um, to be tracked. Um, but within GA4 itself, you can only create new events based on existing ones. Brand new events um, will have to be implemented via tracking in GTM or through adding some code to your website directly. So when we go into conversions, so this is essentially where we will see specific events that you've marked as a conversion from the event section. You can also uh, create a new conversion event. So if you, for example, create one called lead, and then save it, that will now appear within this uh, section. Of course, nothing will be tracked because you'll need to actually implement the tracking. So when you create an event and you give the event name, the same as the conversion name, lead, then that should also populate into your reports and it'll be tracked as a conversion within GA4. Within here, this is where you can create your audiences. So if you remember earlier on in the video, I mentioned you can create audiences that you can then publish and send over to Google Ads. Um, this is the section where you where you do that. So we, new audiences is sort of like building a segment. So you can create a custom one, or you can build ones that are already predefined. So in our instance, we have some predefined ones that were already made. Um, so for this purpose of the tutorial, I'll click into a, a predefined one. So you can have recently active users and this looks at people who have been active on your website within the last 30 days, and you can click save um, that specific audience. If you have Google Ads integrated with GA4, you will be able to push these audiences directly into Google Ads, and that allows you to do some clever marketing um, with these users that you have specifically created within GA4. Custom definitions. So we have custom definitions, and this is a section where you can create custom dimensions or metrics within GA4. Custom dimensions themselves can be created of two values. They can either be created off a event uh, or they can be created from a user property. And there's three different scopes. So they can be event scope, uh, which means they're you know probably based on events. They can be user scope, so like a user level custom dimension or item scope, which means it's based on products or your e-commerce setup. So when you set a uh, dimension, you need to give it a dimension name. So for this example, we'll call it custom dimension, and then you can give it a description. So call it test, and then you select the event parameter that you want it to, to be across in when it's event scope. So it will be any you know event parameter that is useful to you. So you click that and then you click save and your custom dimension will be saved. When it's user, it's not a event parameter that you use, you have to create use a user property. And user properties are different to event parameters, whereas with event parameters, it's, it's event level, um, and you create a custom event and you, can, you add the parameters within it. User properties um, typically have to be added to the configuration tag with GA4. It's a value that does persist and it stays with that user. So a typical user property you might wanna add would be something like the customer type would be their login ID if, if you allow like people to log into your website. It'd be those kind of values that are unique to a user. You set that as a user property, send it to GA4, and then once it arrives in GA4, you can then create custom dimensions off of it. Item parameters, similar to event parameters. So when you have, for example, a custom event for add to cart, within add to cart, you would have parameters with that event. There'd be item parameters. And then those item parameters you'd be able to pull into uh, this section here and create your custom dimension based with that item parameter as a result. So the next section that you have is custom metrics. So unlike custom dimensions, custom metrics are event scope only, and they can only be created off events that you know already exist on the website. So you have to define a name for the custom metric, a description, just like we do with custom dimensions, but then you have to select a specific parameter. So if you have a specific parameter within an event that you've already set up that you want to create a custom metric for, you can um, select that individually. So let's say we select campaign, and then you're then given a unit of measurement to decide. 
So it can be a standard, which is just a normal like event counter. Uh, you can set a currency value, you can set it as a unit of distance or a unit of time as a result as well. And then you can save that feature and your custom metric will be saved. In my experience, custom metrics is an area that is rarely used within GA4 just because it, it uses an event data model. Uh, creating custom events is pretty much gives you everything that you need. So in my experience, this is an area that is rarely utilized at all. And I wouldn't be surprised if GA decide to remove this feature entirely. So you now have the data settings for your property and there are four different areas within the data settings. So we have data collection. So this is where you can enable Google signals, which gives you the cross device data and more information about your, your users, for example, um, and can generally enhance the data. However, it is a very problematic feature within, uh, within, within Europe and Google Analytics 4 has actually been banned in countries in Europe. And this feature has been one of the reasons why it's been banned. So if you are within a European nation, I would not recommend that you enable Google Signals. Uh, you don't have granular location, device data, uh, advanced settings for ads personalization, which just allows you to enable it within specific regions. So when you click this cog, you can allow it or disable it for specific uh, regions. Cool. And then you also have your data retention section within GA4. So by default, it is set to only two months. Um, however, you will want to expand this to be for 14 months. You get as much data as possible. This, however, doesn't impact all of your reporting. This only impacts the expiration section. So this will mean you only get two months of data within expirations by default, but you want to change this to 14 months just so that your expirations will be more useful to yourself. You also have this uh, option called reset user data on your activity, and this is enabled by default and you will want to keep it enabled. So essentially what this means is that it will reset the retention period for a user after a new activity. So at the moment it's set to two months. So if a user comes on your website now, their retention period will be two months. But if they come on your website and then come again within another month, then from that month they come the second time, their user retention period will then be reset to another two months, meaning that the data retention will span three months in total. So every time they come and view your website, that data retention period will be reset. Um, so that's essentially what that means. Cool. You also have uh, data filters uh, within GA4 properties as well. Um, similar to what you had in Universal Analytics, however, it is set up quite differently and, it is, and there's a different way to apply filters. So when you click create filter, at the moment in time, you only have two types of filters that you can include. So one is developer traffic. So this allows you to filter when people are in you know, debug mode or developer devices from your website. And then the other is internal traffic. This is if you've identified a user as internal traffic. For the purpose of this tutorial, I won't go into how to do this in this specific tutorial, but I will provide further follow-up videos on how to use both of these filters. And you also have channel groups. So this is a fairly new feature to GA4. Beforehand, you couldn't actually edit or amend the default channel grouping within GA4, but you now can, just like you could in Universal 6. So you can go into the default channel grouping and you can make amendments so you can reorder, into the correct volume that you'd like. You can add a new channel if there's no channel here that you know suits um, a source of channel that source of traffic that's coming to your website, and you can make it much more personalized. You can also create a brand new channel group as well, and um, so you can give it a group name. So I typically call my custom channels uh, just marketing channel, and you can give a description if you want, and then you can like, reorder it as well, or give it you know a new create a new channel as well. So this is very customizable at this point in time. Cool, so you have the option to import data um, from external sources into your GA4 account as well. So there's lots of different types of data that you can import. You can import like cost data, like product level data, user data with user IDs or client ID. Client ID is the ID that is given from the browser, from the cookie, whereas user ID is the actual like user ID and you can import any other like offline event level data as well. It can be done through a manual CSV upload or via SFTP. You then can choose the reporting identity. So you have a blended view, which 
evaluates data from user ID, Google signals, device ID, and then model data. Or you have the observe view, which evaluates user ID, Google signals, and then just device site data. So within here, you also have your attribution settings. So you can choose you know, what specific attribution model that you want to be used um, within your reports um, for the master view majority of the time. There are lots of options in here. However, the vast majority of these attribution channels are going away this year. So I wouldn't spend too much time on, on, on playing around with this because I believe all channel groupings apart from data driven and last click are actually being removed from GA4. You can also choose your look back window as well. So for acquisition, conversion events, that's 30 days and all others is set to 90 days recommended. I typically tend it to leave it at this, at this look back window. But if you do want a further look back window, you do have the option to do so. You then also have property change requests, similar to how you had account change requests in the past. And you have data deletion requests, which is a, a pretty useful feature of GA4. So this allows you to actually delete specific data from your GA4 property. So let's say, for example, um, you have lots of page URLs in your GA4 property for when people are searching for stores nearby and those page URLs themselves actually capture the postcode of that person. Well, that's personal identifiable information, which you cannot capture in GA4. So data deletion requests, you can actually request Google to delete that data from your account so that it's not stored there at all. And so that is a very useful feature that you, that you can use to remove data that you don't actually want from GA4. You then have the debug view as well. So this will show you events uh, while you're in a debug view of, of GA4 on your website. So for example, if you go into like preview mode on Google Tag Manager and you go on the website, the events that you fire and trigger will appear within this debug view. It's also a very useful, almost real-time view of events that happen on the website. So if you're testing a new brand new custom event, you would test in, like, for example, the preview mode in Google Tag Manager. You then come back into this debug view and it will show you all the events that had fired during your preview session. So it's a very good way to validate the events that you are creating and testing in almost real time within the platform itself. You then have a list of all the products that you can link within GA4. And of course, there are lots of options here that are that work typically well with Google Analytics, Google Ads, BigQuery, Ad Manager, and lots of options here. I won't go through all of them within this tutorial, but the setup is very similar to what it was like within Universal Analytics. I will be providing individual videos to help you and try to integrate each individual product with your Google Analytics 4 account. And that's it. So that is my full tutorial of Google Analytics 4. I hope you all found it useful. If you have any questions, any comments, please let me know in the comment section down below. And I will see you on my next Google Analytics 4 video.